Hello, everybody. Caitlin, I remember, like, I recognize people from. Okay, I recognize Caitlin from. <laughs> this is so exciting. Your hair looks great, Caitlin. <laughs> oh, here. Caitlin, you can unmute yourself. That is so great. That makes me yeah. so happy. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody go ahead and unmute yourself. And if you want to stay on camera, keep your cameras rolling too. We're just going to have a good old time tonight. And just forgive my lack of like Zoom bad expertise. So how many screens are up? Like, is there just one? If I do gallery view, is it this one screen or is there like a whole other one? Um, it sh you should be all on one screen right now. Okay. Because if I don't want to not see people. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. There's yeah. Lainey. I yeah. see Lainey. Well, I don't see her, but yeah. I see her. And again, everybody, if you want to keep your cameras on, feel free. If you want to keep your microphones on, feel free. Yeah. If you want to, I would love to see you guys. So I don't feel like I'm in a sensory deprivation tank. Like I, I, <laughs> please let me see you. <laughs> in other words, we're asking you pretty please to turn your cameras on. Turn your cameras on. Come yeah. on. I was yeah. eating dinner, so I was trying to be stealth. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. You could be peeing right now. I just. <laughs> okay, we're going to hope that's not the case, but in other words. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's just a bunch of friends getting together and we're going to talk about a fun book. Right. Exactly. That's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we'll wait. We'll just give it one more minute and see if anybody else joins us. Right. And then we will officially get going. So, so, yeah. Everybody staying warm. Yeah. And I hear we've got more snow coming. Yay. Oh my God. God bless some people on the East Coast. I had to leave. I couldn't take it anymore. Oh, that's right. Because you were originally from New York City. I, yeah, I'm from Toronto originally. But oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Most of my days, all my days on the East Coast until I moved here. Yeah. Yeah. New York. yeah. yeah. I'm cold we've right got... now. I say that. That's so obnoxious. <laughs> it's cold right now there. It's what, 70 degrees? 60. <laughs> Sun's going down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think, why don't we just go ahead and we will get this party started and uh, we'll just keep adding people as they hop on. But I want to welcome everybody and thank you all for coming tonight. I honestly think that getting together and talking about books with friends, making new friends is just really one of the best ways to spend any night in anywhere in the world. Doesn't have to be a winter night in Chicago. But, you know, I was thinking about this. Um, so I have been a fan of Lisey's writing now for about 18 years because that was when the Click series first came out. And so Lisey quickly became one of my dear authors, drop everything and read authors. And I think one of the things that just always struck me and Lisey Girl stuff is just spot on with this is it's real life. You know, this is what, and that, it doesn't matter what age you are, right? These are really issues that just kind of cross the age barrier and just make us remind us of that, you know, human connection that we all have. And so that's, I think that's one of the things that has just really always connected me to your stories and then has allowed me to connect others to your stories. So Lisey, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I am super excited about girl stuff. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to read it yet. If you haven't, you're in for a treat. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Lisey, thank you for being with us. So without further ado, I'm going to transition it over to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, you were one of the first people I met ever on book tour back when we yeah. could leave the house 18 years ago. Yeah. yeah, I think it was you and your sister, I think. Was it your sister that toured with you? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody was with you. I have no memory. Okay. Um, 
But thank you very much. And first of all, I'm just going to apologize for this depressing background. If you can't see it, but it says, sorry, this wall is so depressing. But I moved and I haven't put anything up yet. So sorry about that. Um, but I did think, because normally I'd want to give you a tour of my office and it would look amazing and you'd be so like, oh my God, she's so cute. Um, and I don't have that right now. But what I will do is just kick it off with a little fun game, which is I'm going to sort of bring you into my crazy world of like the things that I do when I'm writing, the sort of rituals and the weirdnesses. And they're all things that I do except for one thing. I'm, I'm counting on Caitlin to guess what it is, but I don't know. <laughs> Um, and you get to guess which thing I definitely do not do. Okay, first thing. Popcorn and mustard. I eat popcorn and dip it in spicy brown mustard. So if you've read any of my books, you'll know that some characters do this a lot. Okay, Diet Dr. Pepper happens, not a lot. It's not good for you and I don't encourage it. But every now and then when I can't think and I need a little jump start, I hit this. I'm not gonna lie. And then it constricts my blood vessels so I get cold. And so there's always like some cardigan laying around. Then enormous amounts of gum chewing. So if you do ever find yourself sharing an office with me, you're gonna hate me because I sound like an animal. Candle, always good for ambiance. Soccer ball because when I can't think of an idea, I like to kick the old ball around <laughs> or do it. <well. laughs> and headphones, because I can't deal with the sounds coming out of my children's computers while I'm trying to work. And moisturizer, because I pick my cuticles incessantly when I can't think of ideas. So does anybody have a guess as to which thing I definitely do not do while writing? Don't be afraid. You can turn on your microphones. See, I'm going to vote for the soccer ball. I feel like that's your kids. And you were like, I need a quick prop. So correct. I'm going to vote soccer ball. You're correct. You really have. Been. It's nicely done. <laughs> yes. okay. I didn't mean to spoil it, everybody. Oh, Sorry. I'm glad you jumped in. Yes, soccer ball. There's no athleticism happening up in here um, at all. So anyway, thank you for indulging me with that. And that was a little tour of my office. Um, okay, let's talk about girl stuff, shall we? Um, I was going to do a little interactive, like, what are some girl stuff topics that you would think of? But I don't feel like anybody's wanting to turn on their microphones, are they, at all? Okay, so we're not even going to do that. But when you hear girl stuff, what do you think of? You think of fighting, friendship, puberty issues, boy stuff, just all the things that stress us out on a daily. And you could be in you could be 12 years old you could be 62 years old it doesn't matter i have learned more than anything else as i've traveled through this world that we all it doesn't matter what age you are you have we all have the same angst and anxieties mm -hmm. we all want to fit in we all want to belong and we all sometimes do really stupid things to make that happen and um what's different for me with uh girl stuff versus the other series i've written like you know, the click and pretenders, there's normally a lot of my characters fight. The girls are sort of backstabbing a lot in order to be respected and in order to be appreciated. They think they have to lead with fear and intimidation. And I wanted to write a book that felt more current with where we're at as a society, which is we're all making big efforts to try and be kinder and more inclusive. Um, and I was like, oh, it'd be fun to write a book where the girls have each other's backs instead of stab each other's backs. And wow, I wonder if I could do that because the click was pretty, those girls were pretty nasty. Um, and can I do that? And can I do that and be funny? And is there humor if there's not meanness? And I have decided that yes, there is. I have decided that there is a lot of room to have a lot of drama, even if the best friends get along. Because in middle school, there's just drama. There's all that stuff that I mentioned earlier. It just comes with being a human being on this planet. And wouldn't it be nice to have girls that looked out for each other? It doesn't mean that they don't mess up. And it doesn't mean that 
they don't have some hiccups along the way, they do. But this is more a series about learning how to grow up without growing apart, um, which was a very important thing for that I wanted to explore. And so that's what this series is about. It's about these three best friends that are so excited that they get to go to middle school together for the first time and they think it's gonna be the best year ever and what could possibly go wrong and a million things go wrong. And yet they still keep coming back to that friendship and it's that friendship that helps them navigate life outside of their little crazy bubble. <laughs> so that's that's the gist of the series. Um, two little things I'm gonna give you a little insight about just cause you're here. Um, the initials of the school are PMS. <laughs> And I'm very excited about this and I don't know if you'll pick up on it and maybe you will and I'm just not giving you enough credit, but I don't want it to go unnoticed. So, hold on. So, I just want you to notice, because this is my favorite thing ever, that the red period on the end of girl stuff. Red period. Oh. <laughs> After all these years. I was wondering why that was there. You're welcome, Kathleen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. And now you guys can all go out and tell people, hey, you know what I figured out? Did you ever notice that? Yeah. You guys have to be the ones with the insight. So you're welcome. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the overall conceit of girl stuff. If anyone uh, has any questions. How long did this series take you to write? Well. <laughs> and oh, and here's me assuming it's gonna be a series. It is. Okay, good. Okay, good. Of course it is. Okay. Um, yes, the next one is called Crush Stuff, and I've finished that. It's not out yet, but um, yes, it is a series. Um, the first one, I'm going to be honest, that I wrote it and then had to start all over again. Um, Lainey Davis, who is on this Zoom, who is one of my editors, she's not showing her face right now because she knows it. <laughs> um, it, it took a minute, to be honest, to find the voices of these girls, because I, like I said, I was going from writing a lot of mean girl stuff um, to now trying to do the same thing and, and create drama when the girls weren't fighting. And it was just me growing and figuring out how to do that and how that can be done and how to strike the same dramatic chords and emotional chords and humor without it being mean. And it took a minute and I'm proud to say I found it. I feel really confident about this series in that way. And I'm, I'm glad that I rose to that challenge, but it did take a minute to find the voice. Yeah. I'm glad that you rose to that challenge too, because I, I really do. Um, and I, you know what a big fan I was of the click, but I, that was one of the things that I think I was most excited about this book, right? I mean, because life is tough enough. And, you know, I think as you mentioned earlier, I mean, real life just gets in the way or, and it doesn't matter what age you are. Sometimes we make good choices. Sometimes we don't make such good choices. And so I think that this is a really good book to put in every reader's hands, regardless of what age they are. And so I was really glad that you rose to that challenge because I think you did it beautifully. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. It's funny. Cause when I wrote the click, it was just such a different time and it was time for me as well I mean yes it was a we were worshiping materialism and girls with money and the like rich mean girls and like that was very of the moment and so it worked in and then what I found too is since you know as we've said a million times it's been 18 years in that 18 year period I've gone through a lot personally and realized that my girlfriends are everything. I mean, without my girlfriends, I don't, I would not be here today for sure. 100%. One of who is on here now. Hi, Mary Elizabeth. Um, and so I really realized that I need to try and enforce this and show what that, what that looks like, because I think in, in pop culture and TV and movies, whatever, we're still doing the whole, like, we need to be mean to each other. Like girls are always pitted against each other. And we need to change that desperately because there's enough going on out there still working against us. We've come a long way, baby, but we've got a long way to go and we need to really stick together. And it was important to show 
how that look, what that looks like. Yeah. And, and um, an important message for all of us, right? I was just having the conversation with somebody that, you know, we shouldn't fat shame, you know, as women, but that, you know, we got to remember that on the flip side, we shouldn't then shame anybody that's a size zero. We shouldn't shame anybody that fits that more beautiful culture. We just need to be as women supportive and opening or open to each other. And so I think that your book is going to hit that so well with this next generation coming up. It's female empowerment for our younger readers. And you can never start that too young. Yeah. And I do feel like, you know, growing up myself, growing up, and then the girls that grew up reading the click and all the books that were out then the message was very different. And it is amazing how much absorbs into our brains from the the books and the TV. And it's just, that's all we know, especially now when we're not even experiencing real life anymore, we're, we're getting all of our social interaction from television and hopefully books. And the, yeah. we have to change the script big time. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the characters in this book. Um, okay, the three girls, they grew up on a cul-de-sac together and they call themselves nesties because they're best, best, oh my God, next door besties. Um, so they're known as the nesties and Fonda is sort of driving this in that she has two older sisters. They live in um, Southern California. She has two older sisters that are perfect and gorgeous and fabulous and she's always overlooked. And for her, it's the most important thing is she wants to matter she wants to stand out and be just as important as her sisters. And so that's always her drive. Um, Drew, who is more athletic and nothing like me, and she's just a little more down to earth, but has this crazy crush on this guy from summer camp who she's excited to find out goes to her school, but he's hot and cold. And so she's trying to figure that out. Ruthie, who is this quirky, huge genius um, gets put in the gifted and talented program at school and isn't with her friends. And so basically these girls are all excited because they're going to middle school together for the first time. They never have been able to do that and they think it's gonna be the best year ever. And all of those little agendas that they have take them in other directions and they weren't, count they weren't expecting that. So they're like, wait, we're gonna do everything together. It's gonna to be the best year ever. And now Fonda's mad because nobody's working with her to make them the most fabulous girl group in the school. Drew is obsessed with finding her crush and Ruthie is upset because she was put in another program and she can't even be with them. So she's missing out on everything. So it all comes to a head toward the end and they do sort of betray each other um, in an effort to pursue their own agendas. And then, but they do come back together and they do learn from their mistakes and you know, I don't want to make it seem like they're these best friends and they never do anything wrong to each other. They do because they're human and life is messy, um, but they learn from it and they want to do better. And so that to me is an important distinction to make. I don't want it to seem like they're just like gosh gollying through life and like, I've got your back. No, I have your back. Like they're real people, but they want to be better. Their priorities are right. So and, and I think it's like any more plotty stuff because I don't want to do that, but that's basically the gist of it. They yeah. want to have the best year ever. And then life just gets in the way, which I mean, really 2020 and 2021, that's when we need that message, right. To remind ourselves that all these plans that we've laid out are, you know, life is going to get in the way. And so it's, you know, I think that's going to be another great hook for readers of this series is it's, you know, again, it's what I said at the beginning, you're writing real life. You're writing honestly and openly about what life is like for all of us. Mm -hmm. So I think the timing is spot on with that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions or issues? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we've got a fun quiz that we can play to see if you know which character you think that you all align with so how about if we do that right now sound good so if you want to do um i don't have my glasses on so if you see me squinting i apologize 
Okay, is everyone prepared mentally and emotionally to do this quiz? What are you thinking? I'm not feeling a lot of enthusiasm. I'll right. do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. Okay, let's do it. Everybody, okay. pen, paper, abacus. I don't know what we're using. Let's, does anyone have pen and paper anymore in 2021? <laughs> okay. If you do, don't be afraid. Go get them out. That's right. We'll give you, we'll give you a second. Yeah. So how many books total are you envisioning this series to be? Um, right now it's definitely three. Okay. Um, I don't know if, if it's under so that. basically, what do you need me to do to make sure that this keeps going beyond three, and whatever you need, I'm here. I'm down for it. Make, make it rain, baby. Okay. <laughs> a lot of I gotcha. I would keep writing, but you know, there is a business attached and I, somebody needs to feel like it's worth it. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Got but it. But I am, I'm so madly in love with this series and, and the characters and, and the, just the plots, they're funny and goofy and they, they do make me laugh. So I hope that I get to keep writing it. Yeah. Well, I'll do whatever I can to make sure that that happens too. Cause I agree. I just, I just, I, I wish I could, you know, say more than I just love this book, but it's really, that's how I feel, right? Like I just want to get people reading this. Cause I think you just did such a beautiful job giving us a story that again, it's going to cross generations, right? Like I, I could easily see moms and daughters reading this together, grandmas and their granddaughters. And, you know, this would be a great mother daughter book club selection. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm hoping I'm starting. Um, cause my, my, um, one of my sons is in middle school, so I'm friends with the girls in his grade. And so <laughs> we're going to do a girl stuff book club. Oh, um, so that'll be fun. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to, you know, once people read it to hear what they think. So that'll be great. Okay. Perfect. Wait, All right. You ready? Are you? Now the examples that I take in this quiz are taken from the book. So this legit people. Okay. All right. All Which, right. So are you? Okay. You're starting seventh grade and want to make it the best year ever. Do you A, clarify your goals by making a vision board? If you can't see them, you can't manifest them. B, seventh grade will be the best year ever as soon as my crush starts paying attention to me. C, insist on total togetherness. When that bell rings, you and your besties will sit together, study together, and take pee breaks together. You will probably even take this quiz together. You good? Okay. All Ready? Right. I'm going to move on. She says confidently. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> Okay, when you hear period purse, you think, A, every girl needs one so she can be prepared. It should contain sanitary napkins, a change of underwear, and essential oils to calm my cramps. Oh, and a bag of Reese's Pieces because they're the best and I deserve the best. B, my period needs a purse? How fancy. C, which period is the first purse from? I hope it's the Elizabethan period. Everything was so ornate back then. <laughs> By the way, period purse is, it's in the book. And I learned this because, have you guys ever heard of like, of puberties? No. no. Okay, so I don't have daughters, but in the town I live in, a lot of moms and daughters do this thing called puberty where they hire this person to come to their house and teach, you know, tweens all about puberty and I was like can I please crash this thing like I need to sit in on this and it was fascinating and that's where I learned about the period purse I never knew that was a thing but they teach the girls to have this little like extra bag that you keep with you and it has all your menstrual essentials so wow. so yeah. my daughter's 31 now boy things have changed from yes. when she was in middle school yeah Absolutely. Mm. And the questions, I mean, it was so great. I live in a beach town. So a lot of the girls are surfers and they're like, now do we wear pads under our wetsuits? And I was just, this is so amazing. I'm like, no. Our middle school actually collects up those items for the kids to take home. Um, they actually will send home packets like that with the food for if you take in like um, the, the, you know, government lunches, you can actually also get the extra period packets for middle school through high school. 
Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. They, they actually advertise at the food pantry. They want menstruation products on top of food. Yeah. So it's, it's in that same kind of grouping. Yeah. yeah. Um, we really have come a long way, baby. Big time. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. That's great. Yeah. And um, I'm having my middle grader take this quiz to find out which middle grader she identifies with. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear. Okay. When my best friends aren't around, I like to, um, is it me or are the next two answers incredibly depressing? Skateboard, surf, or snowboard. I'm never bored when I have a board. Or C, puzzle, read, watch foreign movies, and do nightly new news, not nude, news broadcasts for my stuffed animal. My stuffy loves current events. All right. Okay. And I guess we should also say that what's what is said here tonight stays here tonight. So y'all don't need to know that I still have stuffed animals. Okay. <laughs> Just say. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd rather get donkey kicked in the throat than <laughs> A, not feel special. <laughs> B, have my heart crushed by my crush, or C, get left behind. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is my job, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you might see me at a boy-girl party wearing A, a silk kimono over shorts and wedge sandals. You might not remember me, but you'll remember my outfit. B, a helmet and skate pads. If you have a problem with protective outerwear, then I have a problem with you. C, eye clops, infrared stealth goggles, and, black, and a black unitard. I want a guy spy with my little eye. What is an eye clop? It, well, I made it up, but it's a, um, like, um, goggles. Oh. Like goggles so you can see in the dark so that you can it's spy like, on people. That's nifty. Yeah. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Um, if I'm in a fight with my bestie, I will, A, do <laughs> and to make things right. My apology will probably come with a gift bag and a new friendship bracelet, you know, to remind them how much we mean to each other and how sweet I am. B. Ignore them in public, mope in private. C, what besties? I already moved on. Fine, I didn't, I can't, but I want to. Fine, I don't want to. I'm just gonna make them think I do. Okay, results. Can you guys tell me who, if anyone picked mostly A's? Show of hands. Okay, you're a Fonda. Fonda. You're creative, loyal, and determined. You must be taken seriously by the people you admire and you will do whatever you can to make that happen. You also wanna help your friends become their best selves, but your good intentions sometimes come off as bossy. Sigh, you're so misunderstood. A little advice for Fondas, it's okay to push yourself, but don't push your friends. Understand that your goals are, well, your own. Other people may not want the same things you do, and you have to accept that, even when it messes up your brilliant plans, which it often does. Ugh, annoying. Does that sound like you, Fonda's? Maybe yeah. just a little. A <laughs> little bit? Just a okay. little. Drew, uh, bees, any bees? I can't see the whole. Oh, okay. One? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, if you picked mostly bees, you're a Drew. You're athletic, adventurous, and a real what you see is what you get kind of girl. Typically, you're low maintenance and easygoing, but when you're testing positive for the crush virus, managing your mood swings can be a full-time job. Yes, infatuation is consuming. It fills bellies with butterflies and hijacks hormones, but keep your sneakers planted on the pavement or you'll lose yourself. A little advice for Drews. Try not to give the object of your desire too much power. Stay connected to the people who know how amazing you are and don't share your happiness password with anyone. You are the only one who gets to control that. Got it? Crushes come and go, but besties are forever. Be your own bestie. Does that sound like it makes a little sense? I can't. Not yeah. really into the crush thing, and that's why she's giggling so much. Oh. <laughs> But the rest is absolutely her. It's just the crush thing. And she is dying of mortification that anyone can see her being told she might have a crush. <laughs> well, thank you for your honesty. Again, you're very safe with this group. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
If you picked mostly C's, you're a Ruthie. You're curious, quirky, and in love with learning. Yes, you're afraid of the ocean and you'd wear a bodysuit made of bubble wrap before riding a skateboard, but you're <laughs> big time brave. You don't follow trends or give in to peer pressure, which, which takes courage. A little advice for Ruthies, keep your sneakers planted firmly on the ground. Stand out girls don't always fit in and that can feel lonely and isolating. It's tempted to change who you are so those feelings go away. Don't, don't lower your freak flag and never hide your individuality. Instead, choose friends, crushes, and stuffed animals who value your unique perspective and accept you for who you are. You're different for a reason. Find that reason and do great things. There you go. And Fran and Court were Ruthies. And they oh, sounded right. very excited that they were Ruthies. So. I love that we had a full cross section. Oh, and Danielle was a Ruthie too. Really? Nice, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm actually a Fonda Ruthie hybrid. Okay, so technically, yeah, I had half and half Fonda and Ruthie. So, yeah. as I mentioned in the beginning, I am zero Drew, except yeah. like the crushy thing, and you can get super distracted and taken down by a crush. But yeah, yeah. Oh, and Curdy, did I say that right? Is a Ruthie. So we had four Ruthies. I love. <laughs> Yeah, Fran says, and after reading the description, I am so a Ruthie. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I'm glad you guys took the quiz. Thank you. Um, and so those are the characters and Curdy. <laughs> I'm dying that that's, okay, so Curdy, I love you. Curdy and I worked at MTV together a thousand and one years ago. She's the best. Nice. Oh, we've had a lot of adventures together. I'm so proud of you, Lisey, so proud. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Well, does anyone have any more questions or anything they want to So, Lisa, you have written the gamut. You've written an adult book. You've written for young adult and then middle grade. Do you have kind of a favorite area that you like to write for? Middle grade. Yeah. Are. It's just so much fun and everything's so dramatic and you can be funny and get away with things that... I don't know. And also I'm never endingly impressed by just how smart and how much everybody, they get it, you know, in a lot of instances, especially with the click when parents would be outraged <laughs> and the girls always got it. They always knew the message. They always knew it was a satire. They always knew that I was not promoting materialism and backstabbing that I was commenting on it. And they always got it. And yet there were always parents that hadn't read it, but just couldn't, you know, didn't like the idea of it. And it just always made me really proud. And I think love that age group where I'm just like, no, these girls know what's up. Like we need to give them a lot of credit, a lot more than they get. So I will yep. keep that choir as long as yep. I can. Yeah. Wow. Madeline agrees. She says she loves middle school drama, LOL. Yeah. I think we're all like, that's when we started growing and like, we're all sort of stuck like that was the most dramatic period for so many of us thank goodness <laughs> so kind of they are still like you can't you don't move beyond that you just take it with you as you move mm -hmm. forward but you don't really grow out of it and get rid of it hopefully you just learn how to handle it better but I don't I mean at my old age I am still dealing with the same sort of girl dramas it, it crops up for sure and I don't know that it will ever stop. I just don't let it ruin my day like I used to. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that we ever stop having friendship dramas, right? I mean, I'm 112 years old and I'm having friendship dramas right now. So, you know, that again, going back to, you know, these are just real life stories. And that's one of the things that I love so much about them. Well, thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and, and hog the whole show with Lisey. So y'all are going to have to put up with me. Yeah. What is your typical writing process? I mean, I you have kids. I assume they're home a lot more lately. <laughs> How are you working? So I'm actually, I started writing at the age of 38 and I'm 40. And so I, my favorite thing with these events is to ask, how do you do it? What do you, 
I have four kids. This is just, I am fascinated by how everybody else. Good God. How, right. how you're finding it, the time and the focus. Um, like, how do you self care for it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good question. And I have to say it's definitely changed a lot. It's gotten a lot harder. I'm late on books where I've never been late before. And thankfully, my editors and publishers were all experiencing the same thing. So they have been forgiving and made exceptions. So I'm not, it's harder. I'm mm -hmm. a lot slower. And there are a lot more distractions. I'm lucky in that my kids are so like they're 13 and 15. Yeah. And it's sad in like a personal way it's horrible because there are teenagers and they want nothing to do with me but when it comes to work that's really kind of helpful <laughs> yes so I'm experiencing both ends of that coin it's kind of so yeah. you know while they're working again I showed you the headphones it's so that I'm so sick of hearing their teachers voices through their computers and I'm like can't you just put on headphones no they can't so I will it's harder but I think we all everybody's understanding everybody else's position a lot more and but I'm also I've been doing it for so long that I'm really disciplined with it it's not like with you you're finding the habits and you're finding your routines now in a time when you have four kids at home yeah that's a lot harder like I've already established how I write I know how to sit down even on the days I don't want to my kids are used to me doing it like yeah so give yourself my, a break. My kids do that. My kids understand, especially if my headphones are on, they better stay away yeah. <laughs> because mom is doing something and focusing. Um, and I've not gotten to the novelist point. That is something I'm working on. Uh, the pandemic has completely disrupted it, but I've gotten a lot of short stories accepted and I'm noticing the edits there. I'm at, and it's just having to go through the edits, the fresh stuff. And then the other thing is you cover contemporary stuff. Do you think you'd ever write in the pandemic stuff? The effects, especially with the, the social media changes, I've noticed because my children are six, 11, 13, and 17. Oh God. Uh, yeah, we hit the gamut. <laughs> and I've noticed with it, the changes from Zoom videos and how they're just even interacting of, Snapchat and and the apps they're using are so much more. They weren't even just texting because they missed the videos. Mm -hmm. uh, would you ever want to write on that stuff or is it just gonna be, no, nope, moving on? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm writing another seri a series as well called The Pack. And I did a little bit of that in a slightly veiled way where, you know, the it takes place at a, um, private school and the girls got in trouble for something. And so they were forced to sort of shelter in place and like do all the learning from their rooms on computers. And I didn't reference COVID, right. but the behaviors will be familiar for sure. Yeah, All of that will be familiar. This is personal. I don't know if it's true, but I know for me, when this is finally over, I don't know that I would want to read a story that keeps me in this place. I think I'm going to like everything I'm writing and I am making a conscious choice of like, oh, do I mention this? Cause this is what's happening. And I'm like, no, I think people want to escape to not this. <laughs> yeah. So. No, I, I fully understand with that. I was querying my book at the beginning of 2020. It's a dystopian set 150 years in the future from a virus that happened in 2020. Oh no. Um, I am not surprised the agents, I stopped querying them. I'm like, I just don't even want to even, I, like they were getting it and I was getting requests in March and I'm like, and it went away. Because oh, no. no one needs to read. I, I do understand that, but I, some authors have been talking about just having an outlet, but like you were saying, like the, the similarities, but not exactly yet. I think what's going to resonate so fascinating thing to write, read is I think writers, artists, I think, think their interpretation, their hindsight is what's going to be valuable for this time. Just yeah. like looking back on it <laughs> and how we've all learned and grown and the art that would come out of it more as a commentary on the human condition versus the specific struggles because mm -hmm. we all lived it and it's not fun and we don't want to live it anymore. But it will be interesting to see how people interpret it and the humanity of it, I yeah. think, on the road. Yeah.
Yeah. Let's. Well, good luck. That's. I thank mean, you. Yeah. Yeah. Good I'm enjoying. I, I'm attending these events every week because I find, as you authors discuss your processes, especially just. And it does seem to be the self-discipline and all of that is just, which I have no issue. It's the interruptions of the kids. And as you say, yeah. yeah. Well, I always say it's like you're falling asleep and then someone smacks you in the face. Every time you start like falling asleep, someone just whacks you. And I'm like, that's what your interruptions feel like or the doorbell or like anything that just takes you out. It's so hard to get back in. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> And so you're working on the next novel now. And I'm do you the third girl stuff now? Okay. Okay. Down. And do you have other ones you're going for with it? Like other ideas deviating from these already developing, or are you still so in those worlds that that's where you're for girl stuff, you mean? Yeah. Yes. No, I'm just same girls just as they're progressing and grow just new adventures, almost like series are almost to me like writing episodic television, like mm -hmm. what are you getting into now? And there's sort of these arcs and through lines where, oh, you're still that same character and you're still having those same struggles and you're still you, just like any of us, we go through life and we have our own baggage that just keep carrying with us until we learn to slow it down or to just learn a little bit better, but mm -hmm. we're still us. And so every encounter we have, we still bring the us to it. And that's sort of what this is like. So they're still have their struggles and they still have their wants and needs. And it's just a new set of adventures to bring that out or exemplify that. And then, you know, when it's done, when it's done, they'll be better. I don't really like to end my series where like everybody's perfect because that's not how mm -hmm. it goes. You're just a little bit better than when you started. Yeah. 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 The real life stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. So okay. how did you go from MTV to having your first book published? Um, on click. When toward the end of my time at MTV, I was the senior director of development. So it was my job to find new content for programming. And so I'd meet with a lot of creative people and publishers and editors and people that just wanted to get their stuff on MTV. And I took a meeting with this one editor um, and we were just talking and we had a lunch and I was like, God damn, MTV is so much like middle school. And I just made that like just, you know, people wanting to fit in and the weird things that they would do, like they'd show up for their internship with like wearing dress like from the limited and then like three weeks later they're wearing like it's basically full frontal nudity, <laughs> like just the whole style like everything changed and people would just, it just reminded me a lot of like that time when you're kind of making really bad choices to fit in. And I was a I just saw it and thought it was funny. And so we got to talking and the click came out of that conversation. So I wrote the first two clicks while I was still at MTV. I mean, I didn't think anything would come of it, but I always wanted to write. And so I'm like, I'll just do that thing while I'm working and then I can check it off the list. And the second click book ended up on the bestseller list. And we, I mean, nobody could believe it. It was shocking and very unexpected. And so at that point I was like, all right, I'll stop working at MTV and I'll just write full time. And that's really how it happened. A very unconventional way, which I always feel bad when people are like, so how do you get published? And I'm like, don't ask me that. It's not like I had a really weird path that I don't think is, yeah. Well, Madeline wants to know if she's allowed to ask about the next upcoming ClickBook. Well, yes, what, the next ClickBook? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no clickbook right now, um, but what I'm trying to do <laughs> trying, is I, I really want to develop a TV show. Again, this is want, <laughs> Caitlin, um, of the click girls in their 20s, like the click characters at the, who are the same ages as the readers are now. And I'm ready to audition. that? <laughs> <laughs> Take my money now. What streaming service do I sign up for? I've been waiting for this since the last book came out like 10 years ago. 
<laughs> I'm nervous. So, I mean, it's a big responsibility. I don't know that anyone will be happy with anything I do because you have such ownership of these characters and everybody has a different idea of how they should be. And I feel like no matter what I do, people will be disappointed. Oh, I will not be. I will be so happy. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. be happy no matter what. I mean, I need, I, if anyone has any ideas, of, I mean, I have a very loose sense of where I think they are and what I think the drama should be, but that's kind of what I'm working on in the back of my head. That's, that would be the fantasy. I really want to bring these girls back because you guys are all that age now and it would be really fun to see like, where's Massey at 25? Oh. What's that girl like? You know, right. she's still doing her thing. <laughs> Of course, I want to see him at 45. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, after menopause is caught up to him and all that good stuff. That's really funny. Yeah. yeah. And we keep tracking them with the ages of you guys. And so as you get older, they're going to keep getting older. That'd be funny. Perfect. I would live or, for that. What? I live for that. I'm down. Uh, I am too. And as Lisa says, we will love whatever you do. So hey. good. Yeah. Hey. yeah, we'll read it. Like Good. I said, you drop everything and read author for a lot of us, not just me. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, well, that's good to know. This is always very encouraging because it's always like kind of hard to come out of the writing bubble and like present what you're doing. I don't know if other authors have said that or feel that way. It's like, oh my God, it requires so much energy to like do this. And then I do this and I'm filled right back up and like, oh, this is why I do what I do. People are actually reading it. You forget because you're alone all the time in your head and it's just you and the computer and the deadlines and the stress. And then you're like, oh, but people actually are reading this. Okay. I'll keep going. <laughs> you know, very helpful. So I'm very, very grateful that you're here and thank you because it keeps me going for sure. I reread the click like every summer. So <laughs> The entire series. I sit by my pool and act like I'm Massey Block at 25 Are years you? old. So, Oh my God. Well, if you have any ideas of how you want to see them, I would definitely be open to them. That's so funny. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep I, that in mind. And I actually might have shouted a little bit when I saw in the catalog that you had a new book coming out. So <laughs> that girl stuff was coming. So I might have scared my coworker. Oh, I might have. screamed. <laughs> Well, I actually am curious what click readers think of it. So if you would let me know, like, cause it's different, but the same, I don't know. It, it's still me. It's still my sense of humor. It's still my take on things, but you know, it's not as. Well, it's like you said, it's a different world than yeah. when you started, you know, than when you wrote the click books. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Like Target's cool now. <laughs> But that I said like Target is cool now. Like, and CrossFit overalls too. Yeah. It's cool to shop at Target now. So true. I mean, it is so funny to read those books again now and see how different everything is. Wildly. Wild. Like the things that I got away with saying and I can't even. I would be shot in like <laughs> shot in the town square right now. But it wasn't just you. It was literally all books for people my age at that time. Like literally every book was like the mean girl drama and it was so like materialistic driven to the point where like, I remember like the whole subdivision you were published under was all books just like that. And I read all of them. Yeah. yeah like Gossip Girl. Yeah. yeah. Gossip Girl, A-List. Oh, I love the A-List. Yeah. All those. It was, that's what, that's what the climate was at the time. And I mean, it's good that it's changed for sure. But Yeah. So I am curious to know how you think it compares. So please let me know if you read it. Please let me know. I will. I'll comment on your Insta. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Great. And I, by next time we talk, I will have something behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, hopefully when book two comes out and you tour for that, we'll be maybe doing in-person events again. Oh maybe. You could give vaccines okay. with a book and like, oh, <gasps> perfect. Oh, you are genius. You get a free, you get a free book with a vaccine or free vaccine with a book. Free vaccine with a book purchase. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and at the end of your signing table, we'll have the nurse with the shots. <laughs> perfect. I love it. Done. Talk <laughs> about cross promoting. There you go. So 
yeah, yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah, very but nice. Yeah, hopefully we can all be in person soon. Yeah. Now, do you have anything that you're working on beyond girl stuff? Do you have other ideas percolating? I do. Um, the pack Are you allowed of, to talk to them? which I believe the first one comes out in June. Mm-hmm. Um, also middle grade shocker, but very different. Um, this one is girls in at a private school that have secret sort of powers. And they get mm-hmm. shuttled off to a secret school so that they don't get discovered. Um, and so it d- deals with very different themes um, as far as just like, but always the theme that I go back to, which is there's always the weirdo that like needs to let her freak flag fly and be okay with it. I mean, clearly I take that personally <laughs> and um, it that matters to me a lot. Um, so that there's that and a few other little things that I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll talk about next time. Okay. Deal. Yeah. I promise. Okay. Good. Thank you very, very much. Does anybody else have any questions? I feel like I've been the question hog tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah. No? Yeah. No? Well, Lisey, it has just been so much fun to have you here tonight, but it has been so much fun for me to turn new readers onto your writing. And I think that's one of the reasons that I love girl stuff so much is that it's just going to open a whole new um, world to readers who are going to be introduced to you for the first time and fall in love with you and your stories the way we all have. So thank you so much for that. And, you know, you, you started off by saying, you know, this is a story about growing up and, you know, without growing apart with our friends. And it's just such an important message that we all keep close to our hearts. And, you know, again, you write real life. And that's another thing that I love so much about how we can share these books with so many different people in our lives. It doesn't matter what age we are. And that's how you know that you've got a great story and an amazing storyteller on your hands when you can share that with different people in your life. So thank you so much for girl stuff. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you. And thank you all familiar faces for showing up. And I really appreciate it. And the unfamiliar faces that are now familiar. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you all, thank you all for coming out tonight. You know, without your support, Anderson's wouldn't be here. Lisey wouldn't be here. So thank you all so much for being here and for supporting us and for supporting Lisey. So everybody stay warm tonight. And um, if you're in the Chicago area and if you're not and you're someplace warm, I don't want to hear about it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye everybody. Bye Lisey. Thank you. Bye. Bye.